Welcome back. All right, so proving the derivative of a power function, so x to an exponent, but the exponent is a rational exponent. And when we say rational, at least what I'm gonna assume here is that it's not a whole number, for instance. Um, so, you know, we're not running into the case where m is equal to one. So over here, you know, we're going to assume that it is in lowest terms. Um, so that fraction is reduced, but you know, we're, we're not, having the case where m is uh, equal to 1 because then you know we just simply run to the uh, problem of this which is of course a power function um, but that has let's say some positive or negative integers there now if you want to see just this I'll put up a link up above there um, for you because I did that proof um, so and then the other case that we're going to assume is um, that n <laughs> K is um, you know not equal to um, one either, so that we're not running into the case where we have one over m, which is really nothing else but simply you know the mth root of x. And again, so if you are interested in just this case, then I have done that proof as well, and I'll put up a link up above there for you. So. You know these two cases um, I'm going to exclude I mean it you know the the actual proving results certainly do help us but I'm just gonna assume that you know we're having this n over m okay and it's some fraction in lowest terms but we're not running into these two particular cases in here so we're gonna assume that m is not equal to 1 and then n is not equal to 1 all right so Let's get us started, um, and uh, you know, as we get started, okay, we're gonna. You know, I'll make another uh, assumption that this n over m, you know, it's uh, it's it's greater than zero, so meaning it's a positive number. I'll talk about the negative case um, at the end of the actual video, so if you're interested in that, you can watch the actual proof and then just take a look at what happens if it was negative. All right, so all of that being said, in terms of our setup, you know, how will we prove this? Well, first of all, I hope that you do, you know, still remember your definition, okay, of the derivative by first principles, which would be just limit as h approaches to zero of, our, of any function. And then we are substituting x plus uh, h, and then we are doing the difference between the actual function, and then we're dividing by h. So that is pretty standard. Now, of course, we don't want to continuously be doing this, right? It's nice to have um, kind of a nice little, you know, trick mnemonic right here that we can remember what the actual derivative is instead of, you know, doing all of this junk from first principles for all the functions. All right. So that's the, uh, that's the first thing, okay, that I'm going to do. So let's take this function and then substitute it in here so that you can see what happens. So this is going to be x plus h, and then we're going to have n over m minus x uh, to the n over m, and this is going to be all over h, all right? So that's what we have, and of course, this is as the limit h is approaching to zero. So for the time being, let me just drop this, and let me just drop this. I want to just concentrate on the numerator um, for us. So if I concentrate on numerator, and this is what I'm going to do first, I'm going to take x plus h, okay? And I'm going to take the um, m from the denominator, I'm gonna attach it, and now this is just using exponent rules, right? So this, I'm going to take that n outside, minus, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here, so x uh, one over m, and then I'll take the n outside over there. So I have my, okay, n, okay, right here. Now, just for the um, sake of interest in here, I'm going to call this, okay, this is just for convenience, really, okay, because I don't wanna be writing all this out. So I'm gonna call this a, so now this becomes now a to the n, minus, and then I'm gonna call this uh, b, and then this is gonna be to the n. Okay, now why am I doing this? Because I, um, I wanna make sure, okay, that I try to massage this thing 
so that I have something to work with and eventually is something that leads me obviously to the actual derivative, which is this, which many students know, but a lot of students don't actually know how it comes about. So with this, this is now uh, basically nothing else but a difference okay, of the nth degree. So if you remember difference of squares, difference of cubes, okay, and then you can generalize it to the nth degree, um, you can actually factor this out and then factoring this out, this would have been just a minus b. And then you're going to get, you know, quite a, a nasty thing here, but you know, it's still very doable. So a to the n minus one plus a to the n minus two times b plus a to the n minus three um, b squared plus, okay, this keeps on going until we basically finish off here. I'm not gonna write all the different terms, obviously, because I don't know how big n is. I just know that it's some kind of a whole number. So here, okay, then what I'm gonna, I'm just gonna write the last uh, few here for us. This is gonna be a to the uh, two, and then this is gonna be b, um, and this is gonna be n minus three plus a to the one, b n minus two, and then finally, I guess I'll get just b on its own, n minus one. So that is factoring out um, this right here, and that would be the difference of the nth degree. Now, if you've forgotten about this, I'll put up a link up above there because I talk about the difference of squares, difference of cubes, and then this general case as well, so that you can see that. All right, so now what does this do for me? You might ask, well, you know, it does actually quite a bit if I do this. So um, if I just take, and I'm gonna forget about this for just a moment, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna forget about this. But I can talk about this, okay? So this entire huge thing over here, okay? So let's just concentrate on that. <clears throat> now, with this, okay, right here, and then using the limit uh, kind of properties that we have, okay? So let's not forget that I am, you know, taking the limit as h is approaching to zero, right? And then I have my h there at the bottom, okay, for, for all of this. Okay, so what I'll do is this. I have, okay, uh, let me just rewrite it for you just so that you can see what I'm trying to do here. So this a minus b, um, so now a minus b, I'm, I'm going to take this, okay, and I'll actually substitute what, it, what it's supposed to be. So this is x plus h, right, one minus m, minus um, x minus m and I'm going to keep that h okay because it's um, the h actually spends the entire thing but I can certainly put it over here and then that is okay my a minus b over here all right so that's what I have now this entire thing okay so you know this whole thing right here let me just write it Okay, so that is going to be, okay, all of this junk right there. So I'm going to just duplicate it, you know, put it here at the bottom, but I'll make it a little bit smaller for us. Okay, so that's all of this junk right there. Okay, great. You know, now hopefully you're still with me, um, as you can see that. Now, of course, the A and the B, um, so that is, you know, the same thing here. That's my A and then that's my B. I just didn't fill it in as of yet, but I will shortly. So this whole thing, okay, that I just have written out, okay, so I'm gonna duplicate, I'm gonna make it smaller, okay, it's kind of the beauty of using this software. And, you know, let's not forget that I have the limit as H is approaching to zero, okay? So, you know, as I mentioned, I can use the limit properties um, where I can apply this as long as the limit exists. Um, I can apply this limit solely to this, and then I can apply it solely to this, all right? So that's just by, you know, the actual limit properties um, of two uh, functions that you have where the limit, okay, actually exists. So I'm gonna take, just this right here, okay? And now, 
what's going to happen, okay? So how does this look like? Well, how this looks like, um, if I substitute everything back in, this is going to be x uh, plus h, right? One over m. So that's what I have over here. And then this, okay, is going to be to the power of n minus one. So that's my a. Then I'm gonna have plus, all right, now I'll have this a, since I already written it out, let me duplicate it. So I have now my a, this is now raised to the n minus two, okay, so that's this, times my b, so now my b is just x one over m, right there, okay, to the one, so that's my b. Now I will continue this, okay, so this is now gonna be, okay, right here, I'm just gonna swap, okay, duplicate it, make it touch smaller so that it tries to fit in there. All right, so there we have it. Let me shift this back just so that it's all there. Now I am with this term right here. So, you know, this isn't two, this becomes three. Okay, and then the b to the two, so that means it's not a one. Okay, so this is a two plus, and then I'm continuing this. Okay, so, you know, dot, 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 dot. And I'm continuing. Now I'm not gonna fill all of these. I'll just take maybe this one, okay? And then and then this one over here, okay? Just so that you can see those. So within that, again, you know, my A, let's duplicate it, bring it down. This is gonna be, you know, raised to the one. Um, so I'm, I'm over here, by the way. And then now this one, which is my B, which is X one over M, and this is to the n minus two, and then finally plus, you know, my x one over m, and this is going to be to the n minus one. So now that I have all of this, um, okay, so look what happens as the limit, and h is approaching to zero to all of these terms. Well, my h, so notice h, you know, h, h, so everywhere I see the h, well, that h tends, okay, so this h, okay, will tend towards zero, so basically zero within the limit. And what this means is that my terms, okay, so here's my first term, so this is just gonna be now x, one over m, and then, you know, so this whole thing is now to the n minus one plus, now I'm over here, so that, that x is gone. Um, so that will be now x one over m. This is n minus two times x one over m you know, to the one. But if you notice, okay, so since they have the same base, this is really just x one over m to the n minus one, right? And then I can continue this, okay? So now I can do the same thing over here, but I am going to be getting this, okay, everywhere, right? So now this is over here, and you know, this is plus, okay, so on until I finish all the terms. Now, how many terms do I have in total? Because they're all the same. So I actually have n terms in total, right? So if you look at here, so notice, Okay, so for instance, if I um, start off from that second one, so let's say this goes one, of course this goes two, this would have went three, four, five, all the way up to n minus one. So I know that I have n minus one terms um, plus you know, this term right here, which is my n term. So I have, so all of these, okay? How many of them do I have? I have n of them. So that whole junk, as h is approaching towards zero is nothing else but simply n x one over m, right? So that's what I'm gonna have there. And then n minus one, which really is just n x n minus one over m, okay? So that's all of this. Huh. So what I did was this entire thing I have just simplified right there, right? So this is the same thing over here. So I have simplified all of that and it is just equal to this. So let me now, you know, go back there. So what I have really 
is I have now just, okay, so if I take this in here, so I just have you know, this limit because I brought in the limit into that bracket. So now I have this, I'm gonna copy it. Just wanna show you. So I have that and th this is being multiplied by n, right, x, n minus one over m. So now I still have to figure out what is this equal to, okay? So, you know, this, ho this whole thing, what is this equal to? Well, so that entire thing, okay, so if you really look at it right here, okay, this is nothing else but the definition of the derivative of x to the one over m, okay, and trying to find what the derivative of that is. Now we know what the derivative of that is. I've actually, you know, proved this. Okay, so I've actually proved this already. I, you know, pointed out in the beginning if you wanted to see what that is. Now, if you want to see it completely from scratch over here, okay, let's let's try to see, you know, how would we actually work this out? Okay, so now, okay, with this, so what I have is. I have the following, I'll have x plus h, right, one over m, I am just taking the numerator, minus the x one over m, so I have all of this. I already know what this is, so I'm gonna just drop it for now. I'll do the multiplication after. I just wanna find this limit, okay, of this thing. All right, so let me drop the h over here. Okay, let me drop the limit. Let me just now worry about this numerator on its own. So the trick that I'll use is very similar to the trick that I just used above. So I will have this entire thing and I will multiply that by Again, I'm gonna be using the difference or the knowledge of the difference of the nth degree here. Um, and what I'll have is the following. So let me now, you know, let this would have been, okay? And this, this is gonna be my now new difference. Let's call this instead of A and B, let's call this D minus C. All right, so this is what I'm gonna be doing. So I'm gonna take D over C and I'm going to be multiplying it by Okay, so now this d over c, d minus c, I'm gonna be multiplying it by d, right, to the n minus, um, sorry, m, because we're using m as our root there. So m minus one plus, this is gonna be now d, m minus two and c, and this is gonna be c to the one, plus d, m minus three, d to the two plus, okay, and I'm gonna continue this on all the way within here, and eventually, you know, I'm gonna run out of, okay, so this is d to the one, and then this is gonna be c to the m minus two, and then finally, you know, c to the m minus one. So I'm gonna be multiplying it by that, but I can't change this, right? So in the numerator, so this numerator right here, I'm gonna duplicate it, so I have to multiply it by this entire thing. So my d minus c is being multiplied by this whole thing, so that I'm not changing this right here. I don't wanna be changing this, right? And now I've called it d minus c in here, where here's my, you know, subtraction right there, and then that's my D and then that's my C within here. Now you might say, wow, you're really making this complicated, but that's how we actually need to prove this. It's actually not that complicated because what it turns out now to be, if I take this thing, right, and I multiply it through by this whole thing right here, so this is the knowledge of the difference of the nth degree. If I multiply those two, 
what I will get is nothing else but d to the m minus c to the m. Now, this still stays here in the denominator, so that's fine. So, you know, I'll have this all over all of that junk. I'm going to put a tilde in there, um, and that's okay. So, now bringing everything back, okay, so this is what we are, remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the limit as h is approaching to zero, okay, so to all of this, and we got to bring our h back. So, here's going to be my h. Now, this numerator, okay, if I substitute back what I originally had, right, what that d and c is, so d and c is right here, so this d, so that's going to be x plus h, right, 1 over m, so that's what my d was, times m minus x, 1 over m, times m, so that's c, and that's the m, but hey, wait a minute, if I bring this inside, okay, because this is just exponent rules, then what I'll get is x plus h minus x, so that's going to be x minus the x is gone, so that entire thing is just h, so now rewriting this is going to be h all over h, you know, times all that junk, as the limit h approaches to zero, so this is finished, so this is just one all over whatever this is, okay, so this right here. Now, by the same explanation, so that denominator, so this one right here, by the same explanation as we just had over here, okay, in all of these, because if we substitute back in, right, this is what we're going to be running into, that you're going to have, that this whole thing is now equal to, so if I kind of zoom out here, right, so I'm going back in here, so this is, you know, this is where I'm, this is what I'm doing, so this is going to be the D, right, so whatever the D was, well, the D was X plus H to the 1 over M, so that was my D, and this was to the m minus 1 plus, you know, and you can substitute the other terms in there as well. Notice what this is. As h is approaching to 0, this goes to 0. So this is just simply x, m minus 1 over m. And you're going to find that every single term, when you do that, is going to be equal to this. Now, how many of those terms do we have? We have m, m for Mary, of those terms. So that entire limit, okay, so that limit, which, is, which isn't shocking to us, so this limit right here, we have just found what that is. So that limit, I'm going to keep it in blue over there, so that limit now is... 1, 1 all over, okay, m of these, so m, x, m minus 1, sorry, m minus 1 over m, multiplied by, okay, so this is the, you know, the, the, the chaos over here, so multiplied by that, copy, so that, paste it, so this is gone. And now, so notice if I simplify this whole thing, you know, what will we get? Well, it's n over m, right? So n over m. And then I will get x, n minus 1 over m, all over x, m minus 1 over m. Well, wait a minute. Okay, so these are, okay, so just taking the exponents, so that's going to be n minus 1 over m minus, because I'm using exponent laws here, n minus 1 over m. So they have the same denominator. So this is simply n minus 1 minus m plus 1. You know, so these are gone. So I have n minus m over m. 
which is nothing else but n over m minus one, right? So in total, this becomes n over m x to the n minus, uh, sorry, n over m minus one, which was what we were searching for in the derivative. That's a long proof. If you were able to follow that, then amazing. And it uses heavily, heavily the knowledge of the difference, okay, of the nth degree. So being comfortable, you know, with the difference of squares, difference of cubes, and then, you know, any other. So I used all of that information to be able to solve this. Okay, so that is actually the proof. Now, for all of you, okay, who, you know, maybe were saying that, well, what if it was negative? Does this change in any way? It doesn't. So if our function instead was this and you had a negative in front, then you would apply exactly the same thing. And how you can do that is you can say, well, this is just x to the negative 1 and then n over m. All right. So you would apply exactly the same thing if you wanted to prove it, okay? Except now, you know, you can you can instead call this, you know, y and then now notice you're going to get n over m as well, which basically is going to give you the same thing. Like what is the actual derivative of all of this? You can go through the whole same process and then you'll find, okay, that the derivative of this is the exponent, so the exponent falls off in front, it's going to be x, and then minus n over m minus 1. So it's going to be identical. That's what's going to happen there if you would have done the proof that I just have followed through. All right? Okay, so that was a long proof. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you in another video. Bye, everybody. Happy studying for calculus.